Uh, his question is what is, how is the spiritual journey without a master? Uh, without a master, the spiritual journey is very difficult and sometimes it is dangerous also. Mm -hmm. Difficult because you know, just learning ABCD, you need a master. Somebody in the childhood had hold our hand and then, yeah, he has helped us to write A. Even we cannot write A without the help. A, B, C, D was also we learned from with the help of the teacher. And this is spiritual science is so vast. So without master, it is difficult. And sometimes when you start having experience, or that sometimes you could then realize it, then you won't be able to control the energy. The master and the master. And when there is a master, you are in safe hand. My question is uh, would you talk, uh, before we start the meditation, would you talk to some uh, compassion of uh, Osho or down to earth nature of Osho? Because I get more of a lot of questions from my friends or you know people who come to the studio first time that Osho seems like a very flaunting uh, teacher who wants to display his. Uh, Rolls Royce, or uh, you know, at the same time as uh, uh, prosperity or uh, looks well, uh, what to show off. So, <laughs> but at the same time, um, I feel that uh, um, and a lot of the old times in the they have shared stories to share that he was very down uh, towards the master. Uh, he never treated anyone with any uh, you know uh, comparison. Uh, would you like to share on, on both of these aspects and where is the balance? Also, he comes from a very poor family. And he was never educated in a good school. He was always educated in third class school where there were not good teachers. And he couldn't go to any good college. And he was never exposed to it elite society in China and live in a remote village and the type of village was very undeveloped and their parents were uneducated. He was the first to get education in his family. So it also comes from that background. So he has a great compassion for poor people because he has lived in poverty. In Puna Ashram, Whenever somebody comes, uh, came without money, we always ask Lakshmi to give him free food pass or free entry pass. He was very compassionate about the people who deprived people. He uses raw style that was also with some purpose. In America, a lot of people, especially at that time when Osho came in 1981, America had changed since then. Now it's a different America. In 81, it was a different America. So Osho uses Rawls Riot just to shock the America. To get the attention. Yes, because American. Uh, where all the American rich people were interested in all style. Materialistic <coughs> society. And when I was in the rich Puram, there used to be every day visitor in the rich Puram from um, east and west, both coast, from many cities of Bengal, they used to come. And they were not interested to see meditation hall, they were not interested to attend also lecture, they were not interested in buying Osho book. The first question they have to ask, where is the garage of Rolls Royce where he keeps 94 Rolls Royce? <laughs> <laughs> and we have a hotel in Rajdishpuram. Uh, the, the, the hotel was filled by that guest, that type of guest. He used to come to see his Rolls Royce. They used to take pictures of 96 bands in a row, different color. It was like a Taj Mahal in front of It was a good tourist site. 
in the six hall that, and they will arrange in a rainbow color. <laughs> so a lot of Americans pay attention to Osho because of Rawls Bayer. He wanted to draw the attention of the people. Whole America was shocked that one Indian who didn't have even a, a resident visa, he gives 96 dollars. The uh, nearby uh, church, the priest of that church, who is to criticize Osho in his sermon that he is antichrist or he is a devil, uh, 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 a priest in the nearby city called Madras, there is a church, and he was all the time criticizing Osho. He wrote a letter to Bhagwan that uh, you have uh, 96 rolls right? and uh, you talk about general city and compassion. So why don't you donate one rolls right, to our church? Yeah. <laughs> it will not make much difference to you. You have 96, you will have 95. But our church, first our church, it will be something very significant. So I request you to donate one own souls like to the church. So that shows the greed of the mind and how much people are interested in Charles Ryan. So he uses those roles like as a device to draw the attention. He wanted that people should pay attention. Because he was what he was preaching. He was he always said that I'm short of time. I want to change the consciousness in a very short time because he saw the destruction is coming. So he was in hurry. So he wanted to draw the attention. That's why he asked us to walk with his locket mala in the street with orange cloak. So people should be attracted. And they should start knowing who is this guy, who is this Adish. So that was the device. When he went, uh, after, immediately after Adish put up, he went to Manali. After he was released from jail. He was deported and he went to Delhi and for Delhi next morning he went to Manali. I was with him in Manali. I lived for a few weeks with him in Manali. And in Manali, in this Puram, he had like a palace, Lausse house was it, like a small palace in this Puram. It had all the amenities of life. Especially the bathrooms it was so beautiful. The fanatics, they have burned the Lausse house. You know, otherwise, it was a beautiful thing to see. You know? they, when I also left the uh, this program, they have burned the Lausse house. Uh, they, I went last year. The Lausse house. That, that was Osho's residence. Huh? That was Osho's residence. That was Osho's residence. They have burned it just to destroy the energy. Because that house has a tremendous amount of energy. They have very powerful energy field. So they have burned it. There is no more. But it has a bathroom like this size. <laughs> All the amenities, jacuzzi and uh, sauna and water massage, things like that. So Osho was living in luxury like a king. It is this for I have seen Lao's house. I have seen his life style in this for So when he went to Manali. The Manali is a, health, is a, a, a Himalayan resort and there is not even electricity, enough electricity. There is very low voltage and he was housed in a small cottage about 150 square feet, 150 square meter room. A small room with a small veranda and there is no air condition. The heater, it was cold, so they, they provided electric heater, but the voltage was so low that electric heater was ineffective. And there is no car, so also from airport, Manali airport, to the resort, the Span resort, he was brought in a dirty, very dirty ambassador car. That's the cheapest taxi. car in India. Huh? That's the cheapest car in India. Cheapest car, and that's a very dirty, because in the hills you won't find good taxi. 
and there it is very dirty, very poor taxi, and Bhagwan was not in that taxi. Everybody, but he was concerned about his health because he is very sensitive. So the car was full of dirt, and people were afraid that also may get sick. And it was a long drive from the airport to the span resort. Everybody of his group was feeling uncomfortable. Then dirty road, the Indian roads are also not good, and the car was not good. So all the disciples were complaining about road, about car, and also was so excited. He was looking through the window, the mountains, the river, and he was excited like a child. And people asked him, "Don't you? Are, are you not discomfortable in this dirty taxi?" Oh, sir, I have never noticed. I am watching the Himalaya. I am watching the river. So the river is so clean and such a beautiful water. And he was very excited like a child. The river room they were kept. He had no facility. So next morning, he used, he, every morning he used to go for a walk. So he went after walk. He called. He used to sit near a Bias River for one hour of meditation in a wooden bench. You will see many Manali pictures also sitting in the old wooden bench. He used to meditate on wooden bench for one hour. I don't know what type of meditation it was. He used to watch the river for one hour in the morning, nine to ten, because daily duty. So sometimes when he was in mood, he used to call one disciple to sit with him. So the first day, I was there on his court. I was very fortunate. He called me. So I sat on the uh, sand of the river, and he, there was one one bench, also one on the bench, and I had the privilege to stay with him for one hour, one full hour. And the first thing I asked the Bhagwan. You are very uncomfortable here. The geyser is not working. I was uncomfortable because the rooms, uh, there the, it was Himalayan cold and there was no hot water. Geyser was not working because the low voltage. Heater was not working. It was very cold in the uh, winter in Himalaya. So I asked Bhagwan, Bhagwan, are you not very feeling uncomfortable? We should go to Chandigarh. Chandigarh is the nearest big town. I wanted to go to Chandigarh to buy a generator for him so that we can have electricity and his room could be heated. So I asked him that should I go, he will allow me to go to Chandigarh. I want to buy a generator for you to keep the one of your room. He said, no, no, don't, don't go, don't, there is no need, I am comfortable, I don't feel in discomfort. Then I told him, Bhagavan, you will. In such a luxury as this program, just two days before he has left us this program, 48 hours before, just 48 hours before, you were in such a luxury <coughs> with 96 fall slides and such a lifeless bathroom and such a big drawing room and such a good garden and everything. And here you are in a 150 square foot room, no furniture, no good furniture, no car, not even a motorbike. So, are you not feeling uncomfortable? He said, no, I am I'm, I'm most happy here. I ever, I always wanted to live in Himalaya. I am most happy when I am in the mountains. I look at the Sono peaks, the Vyas river, the forest. I don't consider there can be any better place than this to live, the Himalaya. Himalaya is the best place. So I am very happy and very excited. That was my dream for them in Himalaya, the last days of my life. That has been fulfilled. He was very happy. And there was no complaint. And everybody in the team group had a complaint about food, about room, about electricity, no communication, there was no telephone working. No. So everybody was sad because they had left the this program and moreover there was no physical facility. Except ocean. Then I asked him a question. I said, Bhagavan, don't you miss your all size? Last yesterday you came in a dirty ambassador car. It saved to us that we could have provided you a clean car at least. 
It was so dirty. Old. Oh, I said, I, I, I don't mind. I didn't notice it. I was not watching the mountains and rivers. It doesn't matter. Well, then, then the question came to my mind that I was hot because Radhispuram was our dream city and it was destroyed. So I, everybody was hot those days. And also, well, in prison for 12 days, that had another shock in our head, the heart. So we were very sad. Overall, the energy of Sanyasin was very depressed. Everybody was sad those days. We all were very sad. We were also what in prison and there was so much bad publicity in the press. And we have lost the, our dream city, Radhispuram. So everybody was the feeling of loss and sadness was there in the whole community. For the community, Ushu community. Except Ushu, he was happy and relaxed and childlike. When I asked him, that, well, don't you miss your Radhispuram house, Lapse house? And I have a privilege, I have, I have been very frank with Ushu. And he has tolerated me all my nonsense question here, yeah, all the answers which happened. <laughs> <laughs> so I asked him, why don't you miss this program? Because I remember when I was in a bicycle in 40 rupees and got stolen <laughs> <laughs> after the sunny day. And I still have a pain of it. <laughs> <laughs> Asset for me in those days, I didn't have any money. I had purchased a second hand bicycle in 40 rupees and that was my only means of transportation to go to town or move around the different department of Ashram. When I lost it, I had to walk and it was a great inconvenience. And I, I could not afford to buy another bicycle. So still the pain is there. But you have 96 or that. Don't you remember? <laughs> For one, the answer of Bhagavan was the first thing I never considered that they were mine. They were not mine. It was a Leela, it was a play of existence. And existence wanted to play in that way for a short period. I enjoyed the game. <laughs> you feel pain because the pain is not for bicycle. Pain is for attachment. You were attached to your bicycle. So you still remember. 30 years have passed, but still you remember that you lost your bicycle. So many years have passed. You still you remember your bicycle. Because it is not for 40 rupees, it is for attachment. Mm -hmm. Attachment may be for one small thing. And if you are detached, de de you will not feel pain for anything. So meditate over it. Why you feel still? Because if you were attached to your bicycle, first thing you thought is yours. Nothing is yours. Your body is not yours. You will have to drop this body one day. Don't get attached to this. So attachment brings misery. He told me that attachment, there is no misery in this world. There are only two misery. The source of misery is only two. One is expectation and another is attachment. If you make yourself free from these two, expectation, expectation is bound to bring frustration. If you are expecting, you will be frustrated. And attachment. If you are attached to things, the bound to become happy. So he told me that beware of these two things, expectation and attachment. Live without expectation and live without attachment, you will be always free. Nobody can make you unhappy in this world. Also said, I have no expectation in my life. I take things as it comes, day to day, moment to moment, and I have no attachment. I never considered that this is my own side or my city. It was a game of existence. I wanted to play that way. I enjoyed the game. Why you remember this program? It is in your mind. 
into at the mountains, into at the rivers. It's so beautiful. So you miss this for that, because it does not exist. <laughs> 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 so that was the greatest lesson also gave me, that attachment brings misery. And if you are attached to things, you are bound to become miserable one day or other. Don't get attached even to your physical body. It is a companion for a few years. You have to leave this body. And if you use this body nicely, you will, live, you will die happy. Mm -hmm. So Bhagavan was not attached to anything. That's why he always, he will always remain free. Mm -hmm. 